Are drastically higher minimum wages a good idea? Take a look at what is happening and you can be the judge. First, California, the largest population state, recently raised their minimum wage to $20 an hour for fast food workers and also some other related workers. We're starting to see some stories like this. California's new $20 an hour minimum wage is so good that schools are worried they can't compete for new cafeteria workers. Also, this is making other pretty much anybody else have to get more money because, well, if you're an ENT or anybody else that's a skilled worker, you need to get paid more than $20 an hour because if you're getting less than $20 an hour, you're like, hey, the people at McDonald's or Burger King or Wendy's are making $20 an hour. Surely I need to get paid more than that because I could just go work at McDonald's and, well, clearly you would need a raise, right? If you work in California and you're getting paid $19 an hour or even 20 or even 21, you would feel undervalued if people, you know, a 16 year old at McDonald's is making $20 an hour. That's the minimum wage, right? So we're seeing inflation drastically go up in California, but it's not just California. We're seeing other states like King County, Washington, recently voting and approving $20 an hour minimum wage for the entire county, not just fast food workers, King County, Washington. And we're also seeing many other states like Florida raising their minimum wage as well to $15 an hour, which goes into effect here soon. And New York City, which has a $16 an hour minimum wage, and New York State, which has $15 minimum wage. Now, for the states and the people that are going to comment, our state is at the federal minimum wage of $7.25. Trust me, nobody is actually hiring at $7.25. Nobody's actually working at $7.25. McDonald's nationwide is hiring at $15 or $16 an hour. Here in Ohio, our minimum wage is $10.45, which is you know obviously not $15 or $16. And yet this is the sign at our local McDonald's. Now hiring open availability crew starting at $16 an hour. Notice it says starting at $16 an hour. Limited availability crew starting at $15 an hour. I think that's for part-time. But notice this is the minimum starting rate at $16 an hour. So even though our minimum wage is only at $10 and some change, they're, they're hiring significantly higher than the minimum wage in the state because they need to get people to actually work there. Okay. So they're not hiring at the minimum wage. So People that think minimum wage is $7.25 in their state, they're not hiring at that price because nobody will actually work for that price. Keep that in mind. However, we're starting to see massive repercussions. California's fast food minimum wage law is already smashing small business and consumers. Another headline here from Yahoo Finance, California's fast food wage hike has put detrimental impact, puts businesses in jeopardy, critics say. And remember, they're raising, they're having to raise prices because of minimum wage going up. And we're seeing this across many different states. And remember, as other businesses, not just fast food, have to pay more for workers, guess what happens to prices for pretty much everything? It goes higher. You have to pay more for groceries. You have to pay more for even gas. You have to pay more for anything, right? And then we're also seeing stories like this. Rubio's, a major chain, restaurant chain, files for bankruptcy days after closing 48 restaurants in California. The San Diego chain says its goal is to sell the business. Rubio's Coastal Grill, which began in San Diego more than 40 years ago and once boasted 
close to 200 restaurants now is announcing filing for bankruptcy with bankruptcy protection with the goal of selling the business after just closing 48 restaurants. As it did several days ago, Rubio's blamed its declining performance on what it said is the difficulty in doing business in California, where a recent wage hike to $20 an hour recently went into effect for fast food workers at larger chains. This is not only affecting businesses closing and going out of business, but this is also affecting the average everyday person, you guys, having to pay more money for food. And as minimum wage goes up, even in non-fast food areas, I'm, I know we're going to see comments like, I don't eat fast food. I feel like everybody does sometimes, whether it's Subway, McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, whatever the f it may be, right? We're starting to see minimum wage go up in entire states, New York, Ohio, California, Florida pretty much everywhere. And it's only going to be a matter of time until they raise it nationally. And even for the states that haven't raised it, remember that entire places like Walmart and McDonald's are having to pay more just to get employees in the door. Walmart, the number one employer, Walmart, McDonald's are the, the number one, and number two employers in the country. Walmart is where most people get their groceries. And if you've noticed your grocery bill being higher, well, Walmart has to pay more for their employees. And people will be like, hey, I hate going to Walmart and having to scan my own groceries. But on the other hand, you know, they're having to pay more for employees. And then we're seeing stories like this. McDonald's president hits back at claims that the Big Mac prices are too high amid inflation after a story came out that their $18 Big Mac meal was the exception and not the rule. Yeah, an $18 Big Mac meal. And it, guess what? It wasn't even ca in California. The McDonald's um CEO or president said, I can tell you that it frustrates me and worries me at many of our franchisees when I hear about the $18 Big Mac meal being sold, even if it was at one location in the U.S. out of more than 13700 He says, more worrying, though, is when people believe that this is the rule and not the exception or when folks start to suggest that the prices of a Big Mac has risen 100% since 2019, which would mean double the price. Franchisees own and operate more than 95% of all restaurants, and meaning menu prices are ultimately up to the franchisee owner, the individual owners, who may raise prices to account for increased business and inflationary pressures. And the McDonald's exec refutes the 100% price rumors, saying that the price of a Big Mac, a regular Big Mac, a single Big Mac, not the meal, was $4.39 in 2019 and is now on average, the average price of a Big Mac is $5.29, a 21% increase now compared to 2019. Of course, this is the average and your local McDonald's price may vary. This is also not the price for a meal, which would include a fry and a drink. By the way, this Big Mac combo for $17.59 plus tax was in Darien, Connecticut. Yeah, Darien, Connecticut. Yikes. And the minimum wage in Connecticut is $15.69 an hour. And again, that's the minimum wage. Who knows if they're actually paying more there at that particular McDonald's. So again, I ask you, are these $15 to $20 an hour minimum wages a good thing for America or a bad thing? People need a living wage, but is a minimum wage that high, which is going to raise the price of everything, 
fast food, groceries, gas, rent, everything, because it's going to raise the price of everything. Is that a good thing? Let me know your thoughts here in the comments. I will keep you up to date with everything going on here in our country on a daily basis. Thank you so much for liking these videos. Share these videos with anybody that needs to hear this information. Make sure to subscribe down below. Click the subscribe button, then the bell icon so you don't miss out on new videos that come out here at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's completely free to do so. Click here to watch my newest video. It's a good one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.